Hey everybody, this is Perch, and I did a video a few days ago talking about fan fiction. In particular, are comics really nothing more than fan fiction now? And a few of you wrote in saying, hey, what is fan fiction? I actually don't know. So uh, to, to kind of respond to that, I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go out there and I'm going to find some fan fiction. I'm going to read it to you, and it'll give you a sense of kind of what fan fiction is. And so I went back and I actually uh, found one of my favorite fan fiction writers, a Comics Nix. Now, if you've heard of Comics Nix, right now you are you are most likely uh, cringing a bit and horrified about what's uh, what's about to happen. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I I went ahead and I read one of his stories, uh, in in particular the Dark Phoenix Saga, Revenge of Jean Grey, and uh, I read it. And and even as I was reading it, somewhere in the back of my mind was going, you know, I I should never release this uh, to public, and um, and and. That is, that was a, as I thought about it through the day, I'm like, I'm going to go back and I'm going to redo that video, read a different story because, uh, well, let me, let me put it this way. I'll just read you uh, one section uh, of this um, and, and it'll give you a sense of it. Now, at this point, what I do want to do is say, this is absolutely not for children. Now, what I'm about to read you is not for children, but it's nowhere near as not, not for children as the entire story, which includes things like uh, cannibalism and uh, lots of various fluids uh, from the body um, of uh, not the ones that are not the ones you like uh, doing bad things uh, or horrifying, absolutely horrifying. But I'll give you a little, a little hint. Uh, so uh, here is, and what is awesome about Comics Nix is that he just goes for it as a writer. He does not worry about things like spelling, punctuation, everything else. And, and many have speculated it's a troll, but if it is, it's a master troll. So anyway, here, uh, here's a little section, a, a cleaner section. Um, in this, basically what's happened is Logan, who is heartbroken, has gone and become a garbage man. And one day he found the body of Kitty Pride inside of a garbage bag. And he went to the X-Mansion to investigate and also uh, to get back together with Jean Grey. And uh, Jean Grey flatly rejects him. So this is where the story picks up. It says, so Logan went away to medicate, but Storm appeared. Logan, you did wrong. Now your sins are going to search your entire life. Storm, you are the only one that can help me recover. I feel my heart fainting and succumbing to master beast of delusion. Don't pain, Logan. A woman is the way the feral claws of insanity would never emerge from your soul. Take my hand and let's pull the answers from your mouth. So Storm took Logan to the danger room. There she programmed a bed and tables to put wine and cheese. Logan lay down and Logan laid. The digital bed was comforting, like the days he did sleep on the fluffy grass of the jungle. Logan, Storm said, close your eyes and you will repent your sins. So Logan closed and he felt the passion of her hand walking through his nude and hairy torso. Her ebony hand was soft and cottony, covering him with the purest lust of carnality-ridden woman. She knew Logan was fragile, so she went slower. Logan almost feel a similar feeling, but he did not forget to mention that. Storm nails started to screech Logan's nipples. He felt a delicious chill go up his spine and go down again. It was like an electric bolt going up and down, up and down till the charge becomes neutral. But Logan's charge never went neutral. He was a man of action, a man of intense passion, so his batteries were always topped at maximum speed. Storm knew that and started to go faster and harder, disrotting Logan's skin from his muscles. What comic books are you reading? And I'm going to stop there because at this point, uh, various terrible things happen. So I went, I, I, but I still wanted to read for you a, uh, you know, something by Comic Snick. So I, I went back and I looked at the various things he's got here. He's got uh, Mario and Bowsette in the blazes of love. He's got Sonic goes to the gym. He's got training in the village for a massive man, which is about the Hulk. He's got uh, Scooby-Doo and the Trip of Lust, which I'm a little scared to click on. Um, but I decided to settle on this one. How could it possibly be that bad? Spider-Man versus Santa Claus. So if you want to go, you can certainly check out Comic Nix's work, and I, I urge you to have a drink and definitely go through some of that stuff. Um, and if you have a strong stomach, that uh, X-Men story, you can you can see where that one goes, <laughs> not where you expect. Anyway, let's uh, let's read this Spider-Man versus Santa Claus. So you ready? Okay, here it goes. Um, and again, all credit to Comics Nix. Obviously, he doesn't own these characters, but he he wrote this, uh, and I'm guessing it's a he. I mean, sure. For all I know, I mean, there's there's a, a higher than 0% chance Comics Nix is Tom King. I'm just going to throw that out there as well. But anyway, especially since all the stories end very, very badly. Um, okay, so let's get into Spider-Man versus Santa Claus. Here we go. 
It's Christmas, but people are dying because Santa Claus is sending them bombs instead of presents. One day, on the 25th of Christmas, Auntie May receives a package with a bomb that explodes and chop her head off her neck. Peter Parker arrives the moment she opens the package. Boom! No, Aunt May, don't die. Peter screams in vain as Aten May head flies through the window. God damn, Santa Claus will pay. And Peter goes with Mary Jane to the airport to buy a ticket to the North Pole. They arrive there, and it's very cold. Mary Jane, you forgot to bring cold temperature clothes, screams enraged Peter at Mary Jane's. So, so sorry, Peter Parker, and Mary Jane get utterly sad. Happily, Peter brought his Spider-Man suit so he doesn't feel the freezing cold. So he gives his clothes to Mary Jane so she uses it above her own clothes. So she is warm now too. And that worked out. Mary Jane, we must find Santa Claus workshop. Pierre, do you think vengeance is the best solution to the problem? And Mary Jane sips the tea as Peter drives a rented Mercedes, the snowy roads of North Pole, trying to find Santa Claus work pop. Yes, I must revenge my Aunt May, and Peter clinch his hand in form of claw, a claw of justice, a claw shaped like a spider that will destroy evil in the Christmas. After moments, spider, man spider sense, senses Santa Claus. He is nearby, I'll get him. Beware, Peter, I worry you, and Mary Jane kisses theater man buttocks with lips full of vermilion lipstick smelling macaroni. Spider-Man then enters Santa Claus' workshop and starts to punch the elves in the face. Tell me where the fucker is. Tell me, cries as a madman the Spider-Man seeking justice his Anthemay didn't have. I'm here, Peter Parker, utters the red suit clad old man called Santa Claus. You've been a bad boy, Peter, like the rest of the world, as you can see in my computer systems that show the good people from bad people, so I know who receives good presents and who receives coal, but now everyone is bad, so I just send bombs and kill them all, even the children. No, how do you know my name? I'm Santa Claus, and Sporter Man and Santa stats to fight. After a while, Spear Man wins. Santa Crosser, I will bring you to justice, you going to the he electric chair, utters Peter, handcuffing him with a pair of web-made handcuffs. No, screams madly out of his mind Santa, the computer made me do it. Oh, the computer, hmm? Let me see, do Peter starts to verify the computer. Santa, your computer been hacked, look, and Peter show the hack someone made on Santa Claus' computer. Peter learned Java at night school, and he turned a programmer so he didn't need to work for Joan Jania Jamro anymore. Oh my god, what have I done? I killed innocent people. Yes, sorry Santa. And Spearman takes Santa to justice. After getting out of the police station, the news arrived that Spider-Man jailed Santa Claus. Everyone is in turmoil because of that. As Spider-Man swings the web of his hands between the skyscrapers, a male child screams at him, Spider-Man, you suck! Spider-Man sheds a tear and cry. The end. So like I said, it's got a Tom King kind of feel to it. Um, anyway, I, and as you can see, if you were reading along on the screen, um, I did not, uh, I, I tried to read it as it was written, which is part of the joy of uh, comic sticks. Anyway, there's many, many stories here and tons of fan fiction out there. So you can certainly go and find some of your own uh, whenever you feel like it. Um, you know, I, I, other than, you know, I, I do urge you, well, I mean, let's just take a look at uh, Scooby-Doo and the trip, uh, the trip of Lust. Let's just, uh, I'm just going to scroll halfway down the page. We'll get to uh, just one page. Yes, Daphne, battle cries Frad. Now go and suck these balls till they bleed the gory of America. The girl starts the fast swallowing movement, sucking, swallowing, and spitting out the Scooby ball snacks. She repeats at a one hertz frequency and then accelerates at 30 hertz per second and going up. It's turning so fast the guys are now measuring it in horsepowers per second. She is a Michael Phelps of ball sucking sport, and now 300 HPV. This is the bad place. Well, there you go. Anyway, I hope you all, uh, well, I almost want to say enjoyed that, but uh, you asked for what fan fiction is, and since I'm not your Google, I really feel like uh, you, you earned. The people, those of you who asked, what's fan fiction? You deserve this. Thanks for listening.